Eagle Nation, welcome into another edition of Eagles in Their Nest, catching up with students all across Georgia Southern Athletics to see how they're getting used to not being in Statesboro, not getting a chance to play their sports, but how they're still moving forward with being student athletes. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Danny Reed, now joined by sophomore men's golf standout, Ben Carr. Ben, out there in Columbus, Georgia, appreciate you joining us today. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on. Okay, I can see you're outside with the sun in the background, so I'm guessing you're still able to get a little bit of fresh air. Yes, sir. Um, I'm living in Columbus, Georgia, and uh, luckily they've kept the Country Club of Columbus open, um, so we're able to come out here and play every day. Uh, so things feel pretty normal down here, but obviously they're not, and we're going through a pretty weird time right now, and just got to do what you can to stay safe, wash your hands, and just got to do what you got to do. Now, when you say you're getting a chance to play every day, how much are you getting a chance to play? Are we talking 18 holes, 36 holes? What exactly are you guys doing? Um, pretty much dawn to dusk. Um, there's not much else to do around here. And uh, the course has been open all day. So um, I've just been out here pretty much all day, every day, just working on my game, just trying to stay ready so I don't have to get ready. If the word came down on March the 12th when every conference and a lot of sports were saying, you know, we got to postpone, we got to cancel, we can't do this. And we were up in Atlanta with men's basketball. And as we're way back to Statesboro to know that the season's over, you guys were going to start the shankle the very next day. And you had won it the year before. And you were building momentum going into that point. But take me through those days and hours knowing that you wouldn't get a chance to defend your title. Right, yeah, it was a uh... – the days leading up to it, everybody was really excited. Everything felt normal. I uh, felt like we were about to play on the Shankle. I felt like we were about to get a chance to defend on our home golf course. Uh, everybody's looking forward to it. Um, we got there. I had an exam the morning of the practice round, so I took an exam that morning and headed out to the golf course. Um, everything still felt pretty normal. Uh, this was the night after uh, Rudy Gobert, the Utah Jazz, got the coronavirus. So uh, things were kind of turned upside down, but as far as the Shankle, when it seemed like we were still going to play, um, but hours passed and we got rumors of uh, teams having to leave. First, it was SEC teams having to go home, yeah. then it was ACC teams, and then about four o'clock, uh, there was no more team vans left in the parking lot. Um, so we were the last team on the grounds, and it was just a weird day. It was a weird day for the world, weird day for uh, any college athlete. Um, yeah, so uh, that that day just kind of turned upside down over the course of three or four hours. What did Carter Collins tell you guys? Um, well, he, he didn't tell us much because uh, we didn't know a lot at the time. We just, we just knew uh, that things were getting really weird and nobody really knew how to handle it. But uh, we had a team meeting later that day and we all got together and we just talked about what was going on. And he had a lot of great things to say to kind of comfort everybody. Uh, because we honestly had no idea what to expect for the rest of the season, um, for the rest of the semester. Um, but he did a great job of just reassuring us that no matter what, we were all going to be fine and uh, it would all work out. You had won two tournaments already this year up at Sapphire Valley and then at Colleton River. And individually, you at Colleton River, you had your highest finish as a collegiate golfer. So what had been working for you the last couple of weeks leading into the Schenkel? Um, I think – for me and for us as a team, we were all just figuring out how to play uh, the best game we could. Um, we were figuring out how to play tough golf courses, uh, which is something we had struggled with my freshman year. Uh, Carlton River is a really tough golf course, and we went up there and made it look pretty easy. Um, so I think we were all just kind of clicking at the right time, which you don't see often in college golf. Um, it's hard for all five guys to be playing well at the right time. And I think um, – we were heading in the right direction, and I think we we're going to play well at the Schenkel and on to the rest of the year. So, sucks we'll have to wait till the fall, but um, I'm still excited. Steven Fisk could come back as a volunteer assistant for this year, somebody that had just finished as one of the top golfers in all of college golf a year ago. He finished as an All-American, somebody that had multiple times he was Sunball Conference Player of the Year. What does simply having him back do for you guys? Oh, he's just, he's just a great mind of the game. Um, he's smart, he's super competitive, and he's a great leader. Um, so us having him around uh, as a volunteer assistant uh, worked wonders for us at Carlton. And uh, just having him around the facility and at the university course, just kind of picking his brain, uh, I know we were all benefiting from it. And we were just looking forward to the rest of the year having him around. 
right, you're a sophomore management major, but we know that for a little more than a week or so, all classes at Georgia Southern have been online. What has that adjustment been like? Um, for me, it's been pretty easy. Uh, most of my professors, or all of my professors, have been very gracious with uh, kind of like letting us figure it out on our own, uh, with, but they're also helping us through it. Um, I don't have any face-to-face -face meetings uh, over Zoom with any of my professors. Everything's just moved strictly online. Um, it's been a pretty easy transition. Uh, I think uh, other majors might be struggling with it a little bit more, like engineering, uh, for example, is a little more hands-on. So majors that are like more hands-on, I know are definitely struggling with the adjustment. But for me, being a management major, it's, it's been pretty smooth. Uh, you said it's been golf from dusk to dawn, but how do you build your golfing schedule around your class obligations? Yeah, so I've kind of uh, been playing golf during the day and then going home, eating dinner with my family at night, and then starting my homework as soon as dinner's over. Um, so I've kind of gotten in that routine over the last week or so. As you guys continue to move forward, I know there's so much that's not known. It's a very uncertain time but how have you continued to stay focused on a daily basis? Um, well, I think uh, I said a little something about it earlier. I think uh, staying ready so they don't have to get ready is uh, the biggest thing that's kept me going, um, even though I'm not sure when I'll play my next tournament. Um, I'm just trying to stay as ready as I can. That way, um, once it's two weeks out of my next tournament, I'm not struggling to get everything in order. Um, I'm just practicing like I would if I was playing in a week. Um, I think that's going to benefit me over the long run, and it's something I'm really excited about and uh, just lucky to be able to play every day, honestly. All right, what are some of the other ways that you've been occupying all this extra time? I've been doing a lot of fishing. Um, okay. Growing up, I, did, I didn't fish a ton, but I fished every now and then. But now, I mean, there's not much else you can do. So I've been going over to my buddies almost every day. He's got a pond in his backyard, and we'll just fish from 6 to dark. And it's been a really good way to spend my evenings since I got home. What is the biggest fish that you've ever caught? Um, probably like a three- or four-pound bass. Nothing special. Uh, I have a couple of friends that fish a lot more than I do. Um, one of my buddies is on the Georgia College bass fishing team. So his personal best is probably four times mine. but uh that's my that's my personal best what's the biggest challenge of trying to go through something like this as a student athlete um the biggest challenge um probably just staying disciplined and um continuing to stay in a routine i think uh when some people go back home it's pretty easy to like fall back into your old ways um maybe like in high school like people you hang around um, but the biggest thing for me is just trying to stick to a routine and trying to accomplish that the best I can every day. Ben, appreciate your time today. I want to hear next time about how big a fish you caught. I want to hear about a big old 18, 20 pounder. Is that okay? I, I, hope, I hope to be uh, telling you about one of those. <laughs> appreciate it, man. Good luck with everything, okay? Yes, sir. Thanks for having me on. That's sophomore golfer Ben Carr, Eagle Nation. This has been another edition of Eagles in Their Nest. Stay safe, stay healthy, G-A-T-A.